Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church in Coral Springs, Florida. The service will begin in about 15 minutes, but in the meantime, please enjoy the following announcements and music. Congratulations to those of you who are celebrating birthdays this week. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they are where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they should fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm Andrew Butler. I'm the director of music 
here at St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church in Coral Springs, Florida. Now, if you've been watching our services each week online, you'll notice that we've been making music virtually with our virtual choir. Music is one of the things that really embodies our worship of God. And when we can't sing in person, being virtual is the next best thing. Now, a benefit of that is that you can sing from wherever you are. And if you catch yourself singing along each week with us, reach out to me and I would be more than glad to let you know about what's involved, how you can be a part of it, and how you can join in making music with us from wherever you are. We'll see you soon. Congratulations to those of you celebrating anniversaries this week. The Lord be with you. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church. We welcome and embrace everyone, feeding body, mind, and spirit in Christ's name. like and share our service, and then invite your friends to like our page.
If you'd like to make a contribution to our church, you can do so using the Zelle app by using our email, zell at saintmnm.org. You can also log into our website, www.saintmnm.org, and click on the donate button. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church. We welcome and embrace everyone, feeding body, mind, and spirit in Christ's name. Good morning and welcome to St. Mary Magdalene's Episcopal Church and our online worship on this All Saints Day. No matter where you come from, no matter where you are going, no matter what you believe or what you may doubt, no matter whom you love, all are welcome in this place as together we welcome and embrace everyone, feeding them in body, mind, and spirit in Christ's name. We're honored to have you with us today as we celebrate this, our spiritual communion. Mm -hmm.
Our service of spiritual communion begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints and all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Robed in white, with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be to our God forever and ever, Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who, that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life. 
and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us read Psalm 34 responsively by whole verse, verses 1 through 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from the first epistle of John chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have his, this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Today, our Collect of the Day, the Collect for the Feast of All Saints, reminds us that we are in a great communion that transcends the boundaries of our earthly life. Today, we not only look back and remember with great thanksgiving the saints who have gone before us, who are now resting with God, confident that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses to our faith, but we also give thanks that we, the saints here on earth, are one with them, united in one great communion. The whole church of heaven and earth. And we look forward with hopefulness to the day when Jesus Christ returns and restores God's creation to a glory that we frankly cannot imagine. And this is why, beginning with our readings on this day and throughout the next several weeks, the readings will reflect both an idea of now but also not yet. As we come towards the end of the church year, our readings direct our thoughts to the end of times, to the time when creation as we know it comes to a close and Christ comes again to bring in the everlasting age to come. And this forward look to what will be gives us, or should give us, hope. And it should also call us to a life of holiness. The idea of now but not yet is perfectly reflected in today's epistle. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. Today we are called to reflect on who we are and what we will be. See the love that the Father has given us, that we should all be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, you must know and understand that we are God's children, all of us, now. What we will be has not yet been revealed, but what we do know is this. When he is revealed, when Christ comes again, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. 
and to all, all who have this hope in him, purify themselves just as he is pure. Who we are and what we will be, that is what we reflect on today. If you were to look at the world around us, you would probably come to the conclusion that who we are isn't a very pretty picture. The truth is every single one of us, every single part of God's creation, well, we're all sinners. We all fall short of God's commandments to love God and to love our neighbor through our thought, words, and deeds, through what we have done and what we have left undone. But that is not all who we are. There is something else, something greater, something that should fill us with hope. The author of our epistle puts it this way, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Children of God. That's who we are, God's own children. You and me and all of the saints in Christ, all of us who have come to trust in God's only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Sons and daughters of the living God. That is our status. That is our privilege even now. And it is our calling to reflect this status of who we are to those around us and to be conformed into the image of Christ, our brother. What an amazing and profound love God has given us. God sent Christ, his only begotten son, to be not only our savior, but our brother, fulfilling the law in our stead since God knew we couldn't do it on our own living a life of perfect love, always doing the will of God, and finally suffering the punishment that should have been ours. He did this for us, and through the grace of God and the resurrection of Christ, that death that should have awaited us is gone, replaced with a promise of forgiveness of eternal life, a message of hope proclaimed to us and to be proclaimed throughout the world. And on this day of All Saints, we celebrate those who have heard this message of forgiveness and life and proclaimed it by their words and deeds. These are the saints of God. And their number includes the famous saints, St. Saint Peter, St. Saint Paul, St. Mary Magdalene, and of course, St. Mary, mother of Jesus. But it also includes the not so famous ones, the unsung saints, those whose names are known only to God. The sainted grandmother, grandfather, mother, father, or other person who influenced you positively in your life the sainted pastor who prays for you and teaches you, the sainted stranger who showed you a random act of love that may have gone unnoticed. And that number of saints includes you and me, all of us who put our trust in God and Christ and who have been gifted of this life in Christ, a life we were born into in our baptism when we were sealed as Christ's own forever and when we were marked as children of God forever, our robes washed in the blood of Christ. Sisters and brothers, beloved, just see what kind of love the Father has given us. It is a love that forgives our sins and gives us faith and bestows on us life everlasting. Life that conquers the grave by virtue of us being joined to Christ's resurrection. No greater love is there than this. Children of God, that is who we are now. And what will we be? Well, that has not yet appeared because Christ has not yet appeared as he will all glorious on the day when he returns. But beloved, we are God's children now and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is, according to today's epistle. 
And this is our great hope. This is the church's great hope, each Christian's great hope, namely the return of Christ. This is what we look forward to with great joy and anticipation. The coming return of Christ puts a song in our heart and a spring in our step. We will be like Christ with a soul no longer stained by sin at home in a restored creation. A great big fellowship of the saints from all times and all places all joined together in love and joy and worship. This is the great hope we celebrate on this All Saints Day, a hope that fills us with joy and gives us power and purpose for living, a hope that calls us to holiness as God's saints, as God's holy people, as the children of God. And so we are. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, found on 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all priests, bishops, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the eternal or the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray, Lord, for our president, and his family. May you continue, Lord, to strengthen this place, this community of faith, that you continue to call together 
Give us the strength to do what is right in the world. Give us the strength to take the blessings that you have given us and use them to be a blessing for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Together, let us now pray our prayer of spiritual communion. 
In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Once again, thank you for worshiping with us on this All Saints Day here at St. Mary Magdalene's Episcopal Church. We look forward to being able to welcome you in person. The good news is we are getting closer to that date. We have a target date of opening our doors to limited in-person worship of November 15th, just a couple of weeks away. Keep your prayers going that we're able to meet that deadline. It's dependent on some of the equipment coming in and getting set up, but we're confident that that will be the date that we'll be able to welcome you back here at the altar of God for those who wish to come. More details will be coming soon as to the procedures. You will need to make a reservation, but we've made that uh, process really easy, and you'll be getting details soon through our constant contact newsletter on how this will all work. I myself can't wait to be able to see some of you in person whom I've only been able to meet or greet, so to speak, via Zoom. So it's going to be a great day when we can see each other face to face and share the sacrament of Christ's body here in this place. If you are able, we still are accepting donations towards the video equipment that we have purchased um, in order to open our doors uh, to our limited in-person worship. You can make those contributions either through Zelle by mailing a check to our post office box or by using PayPal through our website. Stay tuned for some more information on our faith-filled generosity. That's going to be the theme of our 2021 pledge and giving campaign. You should be start getting um, information on that uh, about uh, going out uh, the week of November 9th. And I look forward to being able to have conversations with you about how we respond in generosity to the great gifts that God has given us. If this is your first time worshiping with us online or you are a returning online visitor, we welcome you. We're so honored that you have allowed us to walk with you today on your spiritual journey. If you're looking for a parish to call home, we prayerfully ask that you consider this place as together we strive to be the light of Christ to all in the world around us.
let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> If you'd like to make a contribution to our church, you can do so using the Zelle app by using our email, zelle at saintmnm.org. You can also log into our website, www.saintmnm.org, and click on the donate button. <laughs> 